The first television set was fired up in the 1920s, after basically being in development since the mid-1800s. Of course, movies were still being created and viewed since the 1890s using different means, but it wasn't until the late 1920s when live broadcast television programming began. The first American news broadcast was in 1930. Since then, we have been heavily brainwashed and dumbed down, and now there are more TVs than people in the average American household. The same goes for Canada, the United Kingdom, and many other countries. If we're not watching TV on our TV, then we're watching it on our phones, our tablets, our computers. We're constantly saturated in mainstream media content and subjected to numerous techniques for mental conditioning. The following video is an attempt at helping you understand some of these techniques. Being aware of what's happening and fully acknowledging it is the only way to free yourself from it. This is ODD TV. Thanks for watching. Psychological warfare has been waged against America for much of this century. This war for the mind of the public has been facilitated by the emergence of mass media and the transformation of American education by behavioral psychologists. In the book 1984, George Orwell warned that people were in danger of losing their human qualities and freedom of mind without being aware of it while it was happening because of psychological, emotional, and intellectual manipulation. Mind control. The most effective way to protect yourself from subconscious manipulation is by being aware of how it works. What the conscious mind believes, the subconscious acts on. It works like programming a computer. Information is fed into a computer, and the computer acts on it. However, if the information fed into the computer is wrong, it still acts on it. If a person believes something that is not true, the memory banks of the subconscious mind do not correct the error, but act on it. The theory of cognitive dissonance holds that the mind automatically and involuntarily rejects information not in line with previously accepted thoughts and beliefs. Watching television often produces an altered state of consciousness. Though not consciously perceived, the television screen, while appearing static, actually flickers. Any repeating light or sound pattern can lead you into an altered state. A hypnotist uses pattern speech by varying the pacing and inflection of his voice to induce the state of mind in his subject. It is in this state of mind where one is the most receptive to mental programming. Whether or not the information takes hold in the mind depends on two factors. Trust in the source of the information and repetition of the message. Trust in the source of the information induces acceptance of the message as true, even if it is not understood. Repetition of the message embeds it in the subconscious so that acceptance of its truth and accuracy becomes a conditioned response. Thus, this information will be accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again. The flicker rate on the television is very, very important. It was timed to be so many cycles per second and, and it actually just meets with the brain patterns for an alpha state. Our, when our brain sees it through our eyes, we start to adopt that flicker rate in our, in our mind and we go into a deep alpha state. Watch children and watch their mouths. They, they drop open. Uh, they won't hear their parents talking. Uh, they're, they're hypnotized in fact. Uh, why would they give that particular flicker rate when they could have chosen of a whole variety of flicker rates. It wasn't an essential thing to have. So it was done for a purpose. It was meant to be hypnotic. It was meant to be used as a tool of propaganda and indoctrination, uh, even through the guise of entertainment and so on. It also was to create a new society because they were the avant-garde 
as I say, leading a sexual revolution through drama, through little documentaries, um, fiction, non-fiction, all combines. Once again, back to Plato, the audience see what they see. Uh, you understand that it's even worked out towards different age groups. There's something on for everybody, everybody's age group. Each age group is actually being updated as well, even the elderly ones, into new ways of thinking or seeing things. But the target mainly was for youngsters. If we take one of the world's experts on propaganda, who was Jax um, uh, Elal, who wrote extensively on how the mind works and how all entertainment, he said, that has to do with government programs such as police, detective stories, detective series, which contain little human dramas to, as the hook that you identify with to make you watch the whole story. Child gets kidnapped, detective goes on a hunt, he goes through hell and, and what fire uh, to get that child back. Um, you identify with the hero for, if you're a male, you identify with the heroine if you're female. And that's the hoop to get you to watch them. But what he said was all dramas to do with police or even the military and movies are pure propaganda. Pure propaganda. The human story is just the, the bait to make you watch through it to get you to identify with it. Because once again, there's always a message left somewhere in the movie. It might even be a message that's against your own morality. It could be where the cop, for instance, um, uh, does uh, sleep with this beautiful woman while his wife is at home, and it's all part of the story, and even tell you why he did this, he was feeling down that day, blah, blah, blah. And so you've just again altered your viewpoints on how you yourself might behave in that situation. And that sometimes that, can, that kind of thing can be justified. That's how you're downloaded through entertainment. It's there to alter and direct and always upgrade into another step of the direction that the entire culture for someone else's purpose. Let's talk about the, the effects of the Alpha State first of all. Recent articles I've even read on the air from various science uh, studies show you that, that even when you switch off television, you remain in that alpha state for maybe 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes longer, depending on how long you've been watching it. With high definition, it's, again, why, why would a president of a country mandate that all TVs had to go high definition? Is it because he really cares so much about your happiness? And he wants better quality for you? Or is there another reason for it? Well, I'm sure the, f the effects of the old flicker rates and, and what, what it did will also be incorporated in high definition, but with even more uh, added benefits for bringing you into a complete hypnotic state. How do you wake someone up who's addicted to television? Uh, you can't. Very, very simple. You can't get your daily brainwashing uh, where literally it's bypassing uh, any consciousness in the person. You can't take that every day and still try to wake up and learn at the same time. Uh, I've known people who've gone through complete withdrawal from television and gone into depressions because their, their entire routine is, is, is broken. They also have time on their hands, uh, which is a big aspect of control, remember, too. Uh, if you can take time away from a person who can think for themselves, who might say, oh, I'll go and read a book, I'll go and study something, or if you can take that time away from them and have them mesmerized in front of a television set, then you'll keep them dumb, stupid, compliant, and, and going along with the system. I always advise to people, if you know someone who's watching TV, um, it's quite simple to find out where they are mentally, uh, psychologically, uh, in, the, in the understanding of things. You can ask them a few simple questions. If they give you standard television answers, uh, forget it. Simple as that, forget it. If, if you see some spark of, of their own opinion coming in, there's maybe a chance you can do something with them. But uh, you cannot get off. You see, television um, it can be classified as a drug. People think that hypnosis is some mysterious, esoteric thing, and it's not. It's just simply a mental transaction in which a person has focused their attention They've stopped being critical, and they're more open to suggestion.
we're going to start by playing the national anthem, which was the sign-off on television stations across the nation back in the 1960s. Our national anthem. Now we're going to go ahead and watch this national anthem again, only this time we're going to watch it slowed way down. Tell me if you notice anything different from the last time you watched it. Did you see the letters change at the bottom? Let's watch it again in even slower frame by frame motion. happens so quickly you can barely see it but you aren't meant to physically literally see it you are meant to subconsciously see it it is meant to go into the subconscious and implant itself into your brain on a subconscious level and this continues throughout this entire national anthem and it becomes basically like the script for the movie they live This video was shown signing off of television programming for the day uh, throughout the 60s and we know that during that time is the same exact time that the Mass Mind Control MK Ultra project, the government covert operation was going on in the United States. They were carrying it out on the American people and that's been admitted. The CIA admitted it in what, 1970? And there's even a speech where Bill Clinton apologized for it in 1995. So this is all on record. This is not, this is not a debunked video by any means. In fact, everything I've looked up on this video has only gone to show that it is in fact a real video that was in fact shown 
on national television networks throughout the country in the 1960s. And if you guys think they're not using this kind of programming today, I assure you that they are. It's just gotten much, much more sophisticated. Baby Einstein Company was born, and in just five years, her business grew to more than $20 million in sales. Julie Eigner Clark. This is a billion dollar industry that is a complete and total scam. There's no evidence that a baby watching a DVD is learning anything. Educational videos aimed at babies may not be such a bright idea after all. A new study found that children who watch popular DVDs like Baby Einstein and Brainy Baby actually have poor vocabularies. One researcher even said she'd rather have babies watch American Idol. The American Academy of Pediatrics has now for seven years recommended that there be no screen media use for children under the age of two. And this is for some very specific reasons. First of all, there is no solid scientific research evidence that children under the age of 30 months or two and a half years can learn anything from an electronic screen. A lot of media early may in fact change the way the brain develops. Three new studies out tonight are the latest to suggest that heavy television watching can hurt children's ability to learn. The more television infants and toddlers watch, the greater the chance they'll have trouble paying attention and concentrating during their very early school years. Researchers say hours spent in front of the TV only trains the brain to watch more TV. A child weaned on bright colors and rapidly changing images will find it tough to focus on a teacher. Nice jacket. Abercrombie? Please, it's Dior. Why, is yours from NF? Our mom bought it for him in Kmart. I think the thing that upsets me the most is that it's not just products that are being marketed to children, but values. And the primary value that's being sold to kids over and over and over again is the value that things or stuff or brands will make us happy. Corporate marketers have actually studied the whole nagging phenomenon, which corporations do nagging better, and they provide advice to corporations about, you know, what kinds of tantrums work better. Children sometimes say, you know, can I, can I, can I, it's mentioned nine times. Will you take it to Mount Splashmore? Will you take it to Mount Splashmore? Will you take it to Mount Splashmore? No. Will you take it to Mount Splashmore? No. And part of the nag factor is designed to help maximize the number of times children will keep asking and keep asking. No! 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 no. If I take you, will you two shut up and quit bugging me? Yeah, of course. Well, will you take the mouth flash more? Yes! Thanks, Dad. So, these kids have a lot of power in the economy. The advertisers know it. And they are going after them in a way that is unprecedented. It's the place where This generation of children is marketed to as never before. Kids are being marketed to through brand licensing, through product placement, marketing in schools, through stealth marketing, through viral marketing. There's DVDs, there's video games, there's the internet, there are iPods, there are cell phones. There are so many more ways of reaching children so that there's a brand in front of a child's face every moment of every day. What we have is the rise of 360 degree immersive marketing where they try and get around the child at every aspect and every avenue. Kids are inundated with this. They are buried in this. Buried in this media blitz. Kids are now multitasking with media. Hello? Hey girl, what's up? No way. Plug in your iPod or MP3 player. Yeah, new music.
they are using more than one medium at the same time. So they're surfing the web and the television's going with MTV and they've got the iPod with one earbud in and they are more vulnerable and are bombarded with over 3,000 commercial messages every day. Marketers know these are little sponges. They're so wide open that they want to get that brand loyalty for life because that's big bucks. It's about people wanting to convince our children that life is about buying, life is about getting. It's part of this by any means necessary. I mean, we've got to get to the kid, we've got to make sure that that child is indoctrinated as a consumer cadet, so therefore we've got to get to them in ways that maybe they don't even know. Most would say that the idea of using actors to trick the public for political purposes is preposterous. But then again, most people are unaware of a declassified CIA program called Operation Mockingbird, which is solid, undeniable proof that our government is very much interested in using the media for trickery and deception. Here's a short clip from those congressional hearings. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA? who are contributing to the national news services, AP and UPI. Well, again, I think we're getting into the kind of detail, Mr. Chairman, that I'd prefer to handle in executive session. Senator, do you think that you name the news organizations in your final report? Uh, th that remains to be decided. I think it was entirely in order for our correspondents at that time uh, to make use of uh, CIA agent ch uh, chiefs uh, of station and other members of the executive staff of CIA as sources of information which were useful in their assessments of world conditions. Would you say that continues today? Well, I, yeah, I would think probably for a reporter it would continue today, but because of all of the revelations of the period of the 1970s, uh, it seems to me that a reporter's got to be much more circumspect in doing it now, or he runs the risk of uh, at least being looked at with considerable disfavor by the public. I think you've got to be much more careful about it. In 1948, there was a law passed so that our government couldn't use propaganda against its own citizens. In May 2012, seven months before Sandy Hook, a Texan Republican introduced an act called H.R. 5736 smith Munt Modernization Act of 2012, which was an amendment to the 1948 bill making it legal for the government to disseminate their own propaganda in America using the press, publications, the radio, motion picture films, the internet, and social media while also giving themselves the power to put any propaganda they want directly into the archives, no questions asked. Which means their lies and time will officially become history. We all know we've been already receiving propaganda through film and the mainstream media for decades, so you have to wonder what level they intend on taking it with this bill. This bill died in the Senate, but was brought up again as an amendment in the 2012 NDAA, found on pages 326 to 328. As stated on MaxKaiser.com, it is the same exact bill except one word is left out. The article goes on to mention that Section B expressly allows the use of propaganda domestically as long as there is some possibility that at least one non-U.S. citizen will eventually receive the given communication. This completely reminds me of the scene in the movie Wag the Dog, and if you haven't seen that movie, I strongly recommend it. Crisiscast.com It's a company that specializes in staged crisis events. Let's look at the About section. Our specially trained professional roleplay actors and internationally accredited film crews bring realistic, informed crisis management and disaster incidents to life. We are able to use specialist film techniques and disciplines to bring the best of theater and film to our live, immersive simulations. Crisis events. We rehearse and deliver highly credible, immersive crisis events which we can film and supply as interactive training tools. Let's scroll down here. These are some of the main positions that run the show. Emergency Services Advisor. 
behavioral psychologist, production manager, cohort wrangler, aka the handler. So come on over to this website and have a look around. It has everything you need for a staged event like we're witnessing in Orlando. I'm not saying this is the company, but it's a company just like it, guaranteed. Let's go back to the home tab and scroll down. Clients and associates. What's this? G4S? Isn't that the company Omar Mateen works for? Oh yeah, it is. So now we have a huge connection to a crisis acting company. These things are out there, people. Look, here's another one. Flashpoint Reality Based Training. And another, Magnum Services, Casualty Simulation Specialists. Look at that logo. So yeah, another piece of the puzzle. This whole thing has just been ripped apart. 100% fake bullshit. Do not fall for this. This is exactly what they want. For you to be upset, sad, and in fear. I'm trying to help you. Call me retarded all you want. It doesn't affect me. Just wake up already. The so-called witness and student by the name of Blair Stokes, whose tweet and testimony was featured all over the media, with odd and awkward interview as always, as they always are in these stories, who was joyful, of course, in her interview with the duping delight and smiling up a storm, as it turns out, works in the media. Did you really think that these tweets could have effectively been your last words? Um, at the time, honestly, I was thinking anything. I was thinking that a book could possibly protect me. That's right. Now listen, a specifically a powerful behavioral change marketing firm called Salter Mitchell. Let me say that again. Behavioral change marketing firm, which is basically an Edward Bernays public relations brainwash type firm. That's right. Propaganda 101, mind control and manipulation 101, which specializes in crisis communication crisis communication you seriously seriously cannot make this shit up to use witnesses who just laugh it up do a horrible acting job display obvious duping delight and have their background be so obvious and blatant so let that all sink in and as you let that sink in i want to go ahead and remind you viewers who may be new to this what duping delight is and how to spot these actors and liars that are used on a daily and weekly basis in these staged events and on the corporate mass media. Now we've talked a little bit about how to talk to someone who's lying and how to spot a lie. And as I promised, we're now gonna look at what the truth looks like. And I'm gonna show you two videos, two mothers, one is lying, one is telling the truth. And these were surfaced by researcher David Matsumoto in California. And I think they're an excellent example of what the truth looks like. This mother, Diane Downs, shot her kids at close range, drove them to the hospital while they bled all over the car, claimed a scraggy-haired stranger did it. And you'll see when you see the video, she can't even pretend to be an agonizing mother. What you want to look for here is an incredible discrepancy between horrific events that she describes and her very, very cool demeanor. And if you look closely, you'll see duping delight throughout this video. But at night, when I close my eyes, I can see Christy reaching her hand out to me while I'm driving, and the blood just keep coming out of her mouth. And that, maybe it'll fade too with time, but I, I don't think so. That haunts me the most. Why don't we start, if you would, tell us uh, about Christopher. I see you have his picture there. I know you're going through a grieving process. I know you're going through a grieving process. I know you're going through a grieving process. <laughs> but I was a little skeptical of my own skepticism. And I got up and I texted my parents. I texted, but I was a little skeptical of my own skepticism. I didn't really know what to do. I was I was confused, and even if we had gone through a sort of drill, I'm pretty sure that would have gone out of my mind immediately because I was terrified. Oh, wouldn't you figure, folks? While we're on the subject, gun control is hella cool. Hella cool. 
hella cool from Blair Stokes. I, I, th I thought she was a student. No, she's public relations intern at Salter Mitchell. Current, working in the media. Salter Mitchell, WVFS Tallahassee, 89.7 FM. And previously she worked for honestyforbreakfast.com, FS View, uh, Florida Flambeau, <laughs> and v, uh, WVFS Tallahassee. And of course she was a student at some point in time at Florida State University. Ah, wow, yeah. Pretty interesting that you work in the media. How does that function? I thought you were just some student that they picked out of the crowd and said, can you tell us about the shooting? Can you tell us all about the fake shooting? So you see folks, this lying fraud is not just anybody and some random student. She is just an actor playing her role in another fake shooting. End of story case closed. In consumer news, economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. <laughs> of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The uh, final days of the uh, campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. The final days of the campaign can get a little salty. As you probably noticed, the final days of the campaign have been, well, you might call them just a little salty. Yeah. If your email inbox is out of control and you've given up sorting it out, a Baltimore company thinks it has a solution for you. Could this be the end of email overload? 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 Could this be the end of email overlord? Overlord. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. Well, I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, well, you know the rest. A day on the retail calendar that can be enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or a couch. Enjoyed from a desk or maybe the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. Enjoyed from the desk or even the couch. Enjoyed from a desk or the couch. From a desk or the couch. From a desk or the couch. From a desk or a couch. From a desk or your couch. Entering now the Cincinnati Museum Center, 500 or so invited guests there. The President of the United States. Thank you all. Terrorist, terrorism, terror, 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 terrorist, 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 terror organization, terrorist attacks, terror, terrorism, terrorist ne network, terrorist attacks, terrorist group. Terrorists, terrorists, terror, terror, terrorists, 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 instruments of terror, the terror network, terror cells, terrorists, terrorizing terror and murder, terrorism, terrorists, or terrorists, a tool of terror and terror and torture. Third time I've said that. 
could probably say it three more times, see? In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in, to kind of catapult the propaganda. But here you have the Johnny Appleseed of terrorism wandering the country with his little sack of anthrax. 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 Bacterium. Anthrax. Bacterium. Anthrax. Investigation. Anthrax. Investigation. Anthrax exposure. Anthrax exposure. Anthrax exposure. Anthrax tests. Anthrax tests with anthrax scares. Anthrax scares. Anthrax spores. Anthrax spores. Anthrax strains. Anthrax strains. Anthrax hoax. Anthrax hoaxes. Anthrax attack. Anthrax attacks. Cases of anthrax. Anthrax case. Anthrax cases and traces. Traces of anthrax. Traces of anthrax. Traces of anthrax. Skin anthrax. Skin anthrax. Cutaneous anthrax. Cutaneous case of anthrax. Inhaled anthrax. Inhaled anthrax. Inhaled Inhalation anthrax. Inhalation anthrax. Inhalation anthrax. Inhalation anthrax. Anthrax in the mail. Anthrax through the mail. Anthrax tainted letters. Anthrax tainted letters. Anthrax laced letters. Anthrax laced letters. Anthrax letters. Anthrax letters. Anthrax letters. Anthrax letters. Presence of anthrax. No presence of anthrax. Positive for anthrax. Negative for anthrax. Negative for anthrax. Positive for anthrax. Also has anthrax. But not anthrax. I don't have anthrax. He does not have anthrax. No anthrax. Crop dusted. Uh, Omaha with anthrax, mass spreading of anthrax. For the next few minutes, I'm going to give you the facts on Ebola. It'll take just three minutes. Ebola. 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 As you know, this Ebola strain has been much more virulent. The Ebola strain. Ebola strains. Ebola strains. The, the Ebola uh, strain. Ebola strain. Ebola strain. What causes Ebola? The growing Ebola fear spreads around the country. There are fears the outbreak will continue to spread. Americans panicked over a possible Ebola outbreak. Fear and panic over a possible Ebola outbreak. Ebola outbreak. Growing fears about Ebola. Tested for Ebola. Tested for Ebola. Tested for Ebola. Ebola. Tested for Ebola. Is there any cure for Ebola? Die from Ebola. Cure for Ebola. 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 Die. By midnight tonight, more than 1,700 television stations around the country, including WNBC, will have completed a historic change that was years in the making, the transition from analog to digital broadcast. Starts at 4 today, right after Oprah. Well, well, we are in countdown, countdown mode in just over one minute. It will be the end of an era for television. ABC7 is going digital. Now, most people in Southern California will not see any difference. What you will see right now is this countdown that you see in our screen here. We're 53 seconds away now from making the switch. Let's get into what action they should be taking right now. If you haven't acted already, what's the most important thing you need to do? All right, you've got options. Number one, you can go out and buy a new digital television set. You can go out and buy a new digital television set. A new digital television set. Leaving many with a last minute scramble to buy a new TV or convert the old. <laughs> While in Cincinnati, more than 400 people waited in line to get free converter boxes. There weren't enough for everyone. I got here about 1.30 this morning and I figured, figured it'd be a mob scene. This is a change in the way we communicate and in about 10 seconds, the old analog way that has ushered in television for the last 60 to 70 years will be no more. We're going to count down to four, three, Bill Beam is going to push the button over here, two, one, Bill, push the button. Digital 7 should be coming on. Now, if you have digital television already, nothing's changed. I'm Rob Johnson. We're coming to you for the first time in our new home and in HD. Symbols 
are used by Masonic lodges, witch covens, Satanists, and alchemists to directly access parts of the brain which respond to strong shapes and colors. Just as the saying goes, a picture paints a thousand words, so magical symbols can be used to convey a multi-layered message or command. The use of symbols to convey the desire or will of the magician is generally referred to as sigil magic. CBS 11 News at 10 starts right now. Live from Fort Worth, Dallas, and all of North Texas, with coverage you can count on, this is CBS 11 News at 10. CBS 11 News at 10 starts right now. Right now on ABC's This Week. Out of control, the Ebola outbreak spreading fast. And now, the race to save two Americans stricken with a killer virus. This morning, breaking details on the emergency mission to bring the first patient home. From ABC News, This Week with George Stephanopoulos begins now. Good morning. It's an image sparking hope and fear for so many Americans. Christian missionary and Ebola patient Dr. Kent Brantley back in the U.S. It's Friday and that means it's not top ten time. Here again, the shape, this arch with this 90 degree. I know this shot is a little blurry right here because it's just sort of a transition screen. And again, these are just, and understand, these are highly technical. Look at how detailed all of this is just for a fraction of a second of time which means this is being targeted towards your subconscious mind on purpose because these folks that are making these things know that your conscious mind does not perceive these things at this frame rate. You cannot even pick up on it consciously, which is the whole point. So I'll continue to go slowly forward and we'll notice certain shapes again. This interlocking pattern will be 
visible over and over and over again to you in different mnemonic circles, sequences, on different channels, on TV, in different programs that you're being programmed with. And uh, so here we go. Here's another spinning mnemonic that comes right out of the center of that one. And everything spins in here. I'm going to kind of just go through this now until we come to some more parts. And again, there's the count up. So as this thing starts off, it's a count up. So watch. It's, it shows you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a count up. Okay. And then the next process is a count down. And what they do. And all of this is well documented and if you research uh, mind control and hypnosis and hypnotic techniques, it's well documented if you want to bring put somebody in a very, very deep trance, one way to do it is to bring them up and down, in and out of hypnotic states. miracle that no one was killed by the car bomb in County Down. This is a Fox News alert. Fox Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached a historic crossroads. The globalists are collapsing our republic right now in front of our very eyes. They are destroying national sovereignty. bring us into the North American Union. Crony capitalists that have created the planetary corporate system that we know as the New World Order. This is a Fox News alert from America's News Headquarters. I'm Andy Levy. Video now of the first ever parade of heroes in the Belgian city of Brussels. The parade ordered by King of... Right now on Fox 35 News at 5. Slow moving big storms. Will they get severe? I'll have the latest. news, Master Splinter. All we know is it had something to do with the Twin Towers. What's that? Look! It's the towers! They're falling! Ah! Uh, World Trade Center parking garage. How did you know? The gravel that I found in Man Spider's webbing. It still had the scent of gunpowder from that bomb explosion of years ago. Clever. How weird is that? That's 
it. Whoa. Hang it tight. They must wait and see. Establish a new world order. Look! Koopa's tower! On a school night? Did I miss something? Is there a new world order? They bring their new world order to all humans. Oh uh, yeah, government test its weapons there. Weapons? What kind of weapons? Oh, everything from new strains of bacteria to the weather dominator, I reckon. The weather dom? This money ain't no good! It's US dollars! Absolutely worthless! of how much computer graphics is used today. There's just a whole question now of what is real. Or remove the World Trade Center from the New York City skyline. CIA had advanced knowledge. It's not unthinkable they paved the way for bombing purely to justify a bunch of increase. Oh, blame it on the Muslims, naturally. Arbor Day in New York City. Eine kolossale Festung mit Wow. Lost my train of thought here. I've been introduced him enough. So. It was rich in symbolism. It was 
was written for me to death. So help us establish a new world order. Mm. One in which the symbionts, not the humans, not the bestials, not even the high evolutionary, ruin it. You are history! That attack foreshadowed the horrific events of September 11th. Who's this? Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world. And no one will keep that light from shining. Today, our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. And we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Immediately following the first attack, I implemented our government's emergency response plans. In 1879, Wilhelm Wundt, the father of psychology, decided that man had no soul. Man was just a stimulus response animal with no self-determinism. He needed to be trained like any other animal. Supply the correct stimulus, you get the correct response. Just like rats or dogs. In the early 1900s, Teachers College taught teachers the new science of psychology. These new methods of teaching would devalue academics and concentrate on behavioral techniques to mold children's values. Schools would be turned into mini psych clinics. The Rockefeller Foundation backed Teachers College and new educators like Edward Lee Thorndike, James Earl Russell, and John Dewey, who were disciples of Wundt. Together, they rewrote textbooks and curriculum for the new American education system. This system got away from learning to sound out words using a method called phonics. It was old and too difficult, they said. They now use a new method called look-see, or whole word. All you had to do was recognize words by the way they looked, instead of learning to sound them out. And even though reading levels took a nosedive, 
they continued to push these new methods. They hired professional educators that believed history and geography were unnecessary burdens on young minds. Children should concentrate more on how they feel about history rather than memorizing unnecessary facts. And most importantly, the teachers and counselors should be the ones to teach moral values to the children, not the children's own parents. Parents were not professionals. Who won the Civil War? Who won the Civil War? Um, we did? The South? <laughs> like the one in 1965 or what Civil War? <laughs> who won it? <laughs> who was even in it? <laughs> who was in it? Just tell me who was in it. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know. Why you making me do this? <laughs> who won the Civil War? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Hey, I'm drawing a blank on one of those things. I feel like I'm on the Jimmy Kimmel show. America? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Confederates, right? <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, the Union. The, the North. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So who is our Vice President? <laughs> don't um, know. I have no idea. Of right now? I don't know. <laughs> um, what's his name? Oh my gosh. I have his name in my, I mean I have his face in my head. Who is the Vice President? Is that like a trick question? Nope. Okay. I don't know. Oh. I have no idea. I have no idea. Don't know. John... Joe Biden. Yes. I don't know. You're not the only one. A lot of people don't know. I know, but I still feel so <laughs> Okay, who did we gain our independence from? These are horrible. <laughs> um, I have no idea. <laughs> Do you know what year we happened to? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you. So like 1970, no, like 1677 or something like that. Uh -huh. And what show is Snooki on? Jersey Shore. What show is Snooki on? The Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Uh, Jersey Shore. And then who is Brad Pitt married to? Angelina Jolie. Uh, Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. And who was he married to before that? I think it was uh, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston? Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Awesome, thank you. Are there definitions that we can lay out here? Where does somebody go from asking a, a legitimate question to becoming a conspiracy theorist? The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a conspiracy theory as a theory that explains an event or situation as the result of a secret plan by usually powerful people or groups. A theory is an idea that is intended to explain facts or events, and conspiracy is clearly defined in criminal law as an agreement between two or more persons to commit a crime at some time in the future. Thousands of people are found guilty of conspiracy charges every year in courts around the world because conspiracy is an inevitable component of human nature and society. By definition, conspiracy theory is a neutral term. It doesn't mean anything good or bad, it just means a theory about a conspiracy. However, the media has hijacked the term and uses it in a vastly different way. When someone in the United States says that that's a conspiracy or that's a conspiracy theory, by definition they mean it is irrational, illegitimate, and without proof. When we talk about conspiracy theories, we tend to speak about them in a negative light because the very word conspiracy impl implies something negative, I think. A conspiracy theory no longer means an event explained by a conspiracy. Instead, it now means any explanation or even a fact that the establishment does not acknowledge or recognize as true. The only real criteria for a subject to be considered as a conspiracy theory is for it to be characterized as one. Of course, not all conspiracy theories are created equal. Some conspiracy Conspiracy theories lack in facts and credibility, while others are unquestionably legitimate and deserve further examination. They vary widely in supporting evidence and plausibility, but each claim should stand on its own merit. Nevertheless, the media broadly paints them all with the same conspiracy theory brush, lumping them all together and dismissing them as ridiculous baseless fantasies by merely mentioning the conspiracy theory term. This is 
a conspiracy in theory and spurs of a conspiracy. I'm sorry to kill your conspiracy theories, but that is what happened. He's, he's, you know, putting together these conspiracy, conspiracy thoughts, and I'm asking you if you agree. There are a bunch of nutcases. Nutty conspiracy garbage. Only those considered nut jobs question the official conclusion. The marginal nuts. Out. These nuts are still in the shadows, Mike. A lie that wallows in the shadows, like this kooky conspiracy theory. This was just kooky people. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't pay attention to it. There have always been crazy people who gravitated, if they have schizophrenia, who gravitate toward conspiracy theories. Crazy nut jobs have always been there. All right, the evidence is overwhelming to you because you're sure a conspiracy nut. He's considered a crank and a kook by most academics. Some nutty college professors are trotting out that nonsense, and apparently the Americans are buying it. Most people think you're a nut. Most people think well, you're actually, a nut. No, they don't. We just to. conspiracy nuts. And when the 12th largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. So if you want the truth, go to God. Go to your gurus. Go to yourselves. Because that's the only place you're ever going to find any real truth. But man, you're never going to get any truth from us. We'll tell you anything you want to hear. We lie like hell. We'll tell you that uh, Kojak always gets the killer and that nobody ever gets cancer in Archie Bunker's house. And no matter how much trouble the hero is in, don't worry, just look at your watch. At the end of the hour, he's going to win. We'll tell you any shit you want to hear. We deal in illusions, man. None of it is true. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You ate like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. So turn off your television sets. Turn them off now. Turn them off right now. Turn them off and leave them off. Turn them off right in the middle of the sentence I'm speaking to you now. Turn them off. <laughs>